I am so sorry. I couldn't come up with original joke for this intro. I just I couldn't come up with anything else. <laughs> Did you hear that? Don't you think it's about time you came out of the closet? Welcome back to Drinks in a Movie. Chris Hamker back with you. Today we'll be talking about the new horror movie Blair Witch. But first, let's start with a drink, because you should always start with a drink. Today's drink, I'll be making a drink called The Witch's Heart. And it's really simple, actually. You just get a chilled uh, Moscato, white Moscato, uh, the uh, sparkly purple liqueur Vinique, and some grenadine. You put these two together, kind of mix it up a little bit with your spoon, not too much because it is a sparkling drink, and then add a dash of uh, grenadine as a little kind of blood, uh, blood drop in there. Okay, so let's start it off. We have Moscato here. Shit, mazel tov. All right. Pour that into your martini glass. And then we top it off with the neek, the kind of sparkly, you know, looks like a witch's brew liqueur. So as you can see, it's all kind of, you know, magical and witch-like. And then the grenadine for a little blood drop. How'd that do? Hang on. There we go. Make it a little, a little bloody down at the bottom. Anyway, here we go. Here's our witch's heart. Cheers, everybody. Let's try this. It looks really cool from the top. And tastes pretty good. Alright, so Jump Scares 3, I'm sorry, I mean Blair Witch, is directed by Adam Wingard and written by Simon Barrett. And it's a sequel to the horror phenomenon, The Blair Witch Project, that came out back in 1999. And this time, the movie follows the brother of Heather, one of the original uh, characters from the, uh, from the Blair Witch Project. And he finds out new information that, that makes him think that his sister may still be alive out in the woods of Burkittsville, Maryland. Now, no one really asked for the sequel to be made. I mean, nobody was sitting at home saying to themselves, I wonder when they're going to make a sequel to that movie we all thought was real and made us vomit. Nobody was really saying that. So, like Zoolander 2, which came out 15 years ago, and to a lesser extent, Finding Dory, which the original came out, Finding Nemo came out like 13 years ago. This was 17 years ago, the original Blair Witch Project. So, it begs the question, why was this movie made? Now, the answer which is the answer to this question normally, is cash grab. I mean, any time you get one of these unnecessary sequels, these reboots, these reimaginings, uh, these you know, retellings, um, that's really what it was. Now, having said that, I think this movie was actually a really well made uh, cash, cash grab. Now, I had no expectations going into this movie. I mean, I really didn't like the original, The Blair Witch Project, that came out back in 1999. I mean, the marketing campaign was brilliant. It is probably one of the first movies that used viral ad campaigning to a huge advantage. I mean, so much so that some the families of the original cast members, the three of them, uh, Heather, Josh, and Mike, I believe the other guy's name was, actually got sympathy cards from, from friends and family because they thought that these kids actually got lost out in the woods. I mean, that is really brilliant, but the movie itself is kind of actually a little boring and nauseating, honestly. This movie took the idea of the original and, plot-wise, pretty much made the same movie, but what they did that I liked was further the mythology along. Now, excuse me, bubbly. Now, 
Uh, the kids do get lost as usual um, in the in the woods, um, but this time they do some really clever things with time displacement. The 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 little totems, the little man totems that you see all over the posters, they're back as well, of course. They have to be, uh, but they're actually you actually find out what they're used for, and it actually made for one of the most surprising and best scenes in the whole movie. Um, they also do some really amazing things with sound design. There's one point in the movie, I swear, that I actually looked over my shoulder thinking that something was going on behind me. It was actually a, a sound effect, and I thought that was really impressive. Sound is really good in this movie. Now, the last 20 minutes go full throttle on the edge of your seat scares, and I thought it was really, really well done. And there's a scene close to the end of the movie uh, that you kind of see in the trailer that, if you're claustrophobic, is really, really going to freak you out. So now let's get to the negatives. And boy, do I have one. The goddamn jump scares. Now, for those of you who don't know, a jump scare is a sudden loud noise with usually something coming into frame that is supposed to scare the protagonist and the audience and usually is followed up with no real danger to the protagonist like a like a cat screeching and then jumping into frame at the at, at the protagonist uh, not there to hurt him just there to kind of jump at you and scare you um, now this movie throughout the first half does this so many times I became numb by the time the real scare started. Now the real scares at the last half of the movie are really good, but I just was so saturated by these jump scares at the beginning, these useless, useless jump scares, that they didn't affect me, uh, you know, the real scares didn't affect me as much by the end. Um, now this, you know, look, so essentially during the first half of the movie, the, the, the other characters in order to get one of the other characters' attention, would essentially sneak up on them, make a loud noise, and jump in a frame. Nobody does that. No human being does that. And so it just, it just became a cheap uh, trope to scare the audience. And it, it needs to stop. Hollywood, if you're listening, this needs to stop. And I thought it lessened a lot. I mean, you know, movies like The Conjuring and Don't Breathe really use, we really don't use these, these, uh, um, uh, these methods hardly at all. And they are really effective uh, horror movies. And this used it way too much at the beginning. And I started to really, really hate it. And it started to grate on me quite a bit. So all in all, I, I actually really like this movie. I found, I found it, I was very surprised by that. I went into it thinking I was going to hate it uh, or just find it boring. And I didn't. Uh, the new little techniques that they used to do the found footage was really good. They kind of, you know, they, they had a drone and that was kind of not used at all, and that, which is really weird. Um, but the actors were all very good, um, and uh, the little additions to the mythology I really loved. So, I'm going to get this movie... Yep. Cheers, everybody. I'm going to give this movie a 3.5 drinks out of 5. I think it, the last half is really solid and uh, makes for a great scary movie experience. So if you go there, hopefully with a full theater, you probably have a good time with it. Um, anyway, thanks so much everybody for joining me. Here's the question for this week. Let me know what your favorite found footage movie is. So it's movies like The Blair Witch Project or like Paranormal Activity. Um, let me know what yours is. Uh, this one is actually pretty good and, and used that method really well. Um, uh, I like the movie Quarantine. I, I don't think it, a lot of people saw it. It came out a couple years ago, but check it out if you can find it. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for joining me. Have a drink on me. If you like this, please like share and subscribe that was creepy uh subscribe down here at the bottom uh check out my facebook page twitter uh, and my website thanks everybody